Hi guys, this is Catherine here with Catherine Mom with Coffee. Um, this week's episode is going to be about two different books that will help you with your spiritual life. And they're very quick reads for those of us who are very busy now that things are opening up more and more. We probably have less and less time now to read. Or those of us who just aren't fans of reading, these books are really easy and it gives you a nice caffeine wake up um, call for Catholicism. And it's they're fun. They're really good reads. So um, let's go ahead and start with the prayer in the name of the Father and then the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, um, in the description box below, um, I posted the links for the two books that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, the second link is actually um, a link to Tan Publishing's main page for um, all of the books in the um, um the classics made simple series. So that way, if you like the idea of the one I'm going to share with you today, um, you have, there's more than one in the series. And that way you can um, look through it really quick instead of just going straight to St. Therese. So um, the one book I'm going to talk to about is from Tan Publishing, great Catholic resource. I've talked about them in the past. Um, so they have a set of books that is Catholic literature, classic Catholic literature. Um, St. Therese of Lisieux, for those of you who don't know about her, she's usually known as St. Therese Little Flower. Um, she lived in the 1800s in France and um, is known for um, the little way. So basically doing small things to get closer to God. So instead of thinking, oh, I can, I can only be a saint if I do these great, amazing, spectacular things. Um, according to her, you don't. And she's a doctor of the church. And um, that basically just means that um, she doesn't have a doctorate degree or anything, but that it means that she, um, what she wrote and said um, applies to Catholicism in a very special way is the basic way to um, simplify this. But anyways, um, so the reason why I wanted to recommend this book was I had my husband read it. I got it from Tan um, when they were having a $5 sale, like all of their, a large portion of their books were $5. These are normally like seven or eight bucks on their own. I think they are like 30, yeah, 32 pages, um, including that in, is including the suggested reading section in the back. But my husband was looking for a book during Lent um, to read that was spiritual in nature that um, he could read quickly because he was also in the middle of another book that he really loved. He's like, you know, you're reading something spiritual. I want to, but I don't know. I don't want to start something big because most of the books we have in our Catholic library are big. They're like at least 250 pages and he didn't want to read two large books together. So I recommended this one and he read it in like a couple of days and I think he liked it. He hasn't said it otherwise. So um, these are great. It's um, I think it's even good for middle school age kids. So if you have a sixth, seventh, eighth grader that um, is interested in the saint or one of the Catholic classics, but they're not quite ready for the actual book yet, this is perfect. It's kind of like cliff notes, but um, Catholic version of it, they have timelines. So it's also great if you're homeschooling and you want to show your kids different um, nonfiction text features. So they have timelines. Um, they even have, I think they have the glossary in the back too. So if you're new to Catholicism or if you're um, a convert or you are um, somebody who knows Catholics, but you're not Catholic yourself and you're curious, um, it's a great way to delve into it too. So it has a glossary section, beautiful photographs of the saint. Um, this is about, this one is, um, goes towards her biography, a story of the soul or the story of the soul. And that, um, if you're not familiar with St. Therese's writings, it's very, um, has a lot of flourish to it. Um, very, um, if you've read Jane Austen, it's, it's kind of similar in that kind of context. Um, Jane Austen, was in the early 1800s. St. Therese was in the late 1800s. So they're, um, the way they talk is going to be different, but similar enough that it's a higher vocabulary than some of us are used to reading because you know, we don't read as much as um, people in the 1800s did. So this is a great way to get introduced to it. Um, another thing that Tan does with it, if you are the kind of person like me who loves to read and it doesn't matter what the content is, you just want to read it. Um, they also have these available with um, the, like their Cliff Notes version with the actual book itself. So you can purchase this along with the story of a soul together. So that's 
$18, I think together is what I saw on the website. But if you're just curious and want to get kind of like a quick view of a saint, but you don't have a lot of time to read, this 30 page book is really helpful. And it, what's great about St. Therese is that she was a cloistered nun. So she lived in a monastery that they didn't go out in public. And when they um, had visitors, they had to be um, in one room and the visitors were in the other and they had a screen between them. So they really didn't have that much interaction. But she's also considered the patron saint of missionaries, believe it or not. And she never left the convent. She never left France. And the reason is because she just felt in her heart she needed to pray for um, missionaries, Catholic missionaries around the world. So she's also known as that. And she just, I like her as a good example, excuse me, for us women, because she, even when somebody was nasty to her, she still smiled to them. Um, there was a nun that always did horrible things to her, said horrible things to her. And every day St. Therese would smile at her, um, agree with her when on her shortcomings because St. Therese saw it as not an attack on her as a person, but a way for her to grow. So when someone would point out something negative about her, she would say, okay, maybe I need to be a better person. Then if they're seeing me in a negative light, there's something about me I need to change instead of saying, oh, that person's a jerk. So not that saying that the, the nun that was mean to her was in the right, but St. Therese didn't let it get to her. Um, and then it wasn't until after St. Therese dies and um, that mean nun read the story of a soul, basically. So it was published a few years or within a year. I can't quite remember um, after Therese dies that the nun ended up reading the book and realized, oh, St. Therese thought I was mean to her. Oh, how horrible. And so, and that nun thought that they were best friends. She had no idea that St. Therese didn't like her. Um, so it's a great example. So if you want ways to um, help inspire yourself to be a better person, this is great. So it, it works, it works as a great example as a, um, even what to do for kids when they have problems getting along with people. I know I shared this story with even students in my regular classroom. I said, you know, I, because it's a true story, it's great. I just told them that, you know, I, I heard of a story of a nun and kind of gave them the basic um, background about, you know, that she was a nun and um, couldn't leave the monastery or the convent and, um, that, you know, about, and told them how she reacted to the nun that was mean to her. And then they realized, you know, that's a great way to handle things you know, to acknowledge that you were mistreated, but to not let it get to you and to turn it around and turn it into something positive. And that's something we really need in this world today. There is so much craziness and negativity going around. And even if you are upset about something and it's justifiable, how you react to it is what's more important. And so that's why I'm recommending this for a great read for us moms, because it kind of helps give you that boost that even when things feel like they're falling down around you, Look for simple ways to make yourself, you know, offer up sacrifices. So even if you hate doing the dishes, you know, say a prayer while you're doing it. If you um, hate doing the laundry, say a prayer while you're doing it or just tell God, hey, I hate doing the laundry, but I'm going to offer this up as a sacrifice for whatever needs you have at that time. Because that's exactly what St. Therese would do. She was always given the worst doors in the convent to do. And so, and but she would offer it up as a small sacrifice. And that was her little way of offering things up to God. And that's how she became a great saint because she kept offering little things that ended up turning into big things for other people. So that, it, like I said, 32 pages, including the recommended reading list in the back of the book. It's quick and easy. So um, you could probably even get a fourth grader who um, is, has a higher reading level to read it. So it'd be great for them too. Another book I really like is um, The Privilege of Being a Woman by Alice von Hildebrand. She's a modern day writer. Um, if you go onto YouTube and in the search box, you um, search for EWTN with Father Mitch Pacwa and Alice von Hildebrand, you'll see one of her in the same book. And um the reason why I recommend this is that there is a difference between being feminine and feminist. Now, feminists, and I'm probably going to get a lot of negative comments for this, but that's okay. Feminists usually tend to say that being a guy is bad and that women need to be strong. And they're usually the ones that are complaining about how like Disney princesses are the damsel in distress and we need to get out of that, you know, that frame of mind. Well, I grew up hearing that a lot from media like TV and radio and um, 
people around me at church. And I remember thinking, okay, now I don't see how that's a good thing because I like being a woman. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think being a guy is a great thing for guys. There's nothing wrong with that. God created us to be unique and different for a purpose. And there's not one's better or worse than the other. They're just different. Right. Um, so I didn't understand what the big deal was. And then the more I heard people at church saying, oh, well, you know, Catholic church isn't for women and it's all man centered. And I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense because I mean, our greatest saint is the Virgin Mary. Um, we do a lot of things around Mary who, who was Christ's son and Christ loved her and put her first, you know, well, I mean, after God, obviously, but I mean, God's will, but, um, so to me, that didn't make any sense. So then when I read this book, it, I realized I wasn't crazy, that it's good to be a woman. I'm going to read you some quotes from her book, because if you've ever felt like being the quote unquote weaker sex is a bad thing, or you're getting sick and tired of, you know, you have to have everything a guy has or be everything a guy is. And you felt like, well, this is just ridiculous. This is not working for me. Well, let me read you some quotes, because it'll probably make you feel a little bit better. So, um. The first witness of the resurrection was a woman, Mary Magdalene. That's what von Hildebrand writes in her book on page 18. Think about that. It wasn't the first Pope. It wasn't Peter. It was Mary Magdalene, a woman. Okay. So right there. Um, for, um, to be made, oh, this is on page 16, for to be made from the body of a human person is definitely nobler than being fashioned from the dust of the earth. So if you remember from Genesis, Adam was made from the dust of the earth. What was woman made from? Adam's bone. So what she's saying is that it's showing that, you know, the church has always seen women as important. We're not, we've never been seen as something unimportant. And so that's how we need to be seeing ourselves. And I liked one of them. Oh, where was it? This really great quote. Um, oh, I love this. On page 87, we carry, we being women, carry two souls within us when pregnant, ours and our child's. So every person has a soul. And then when a woman is pregnant, she's also carrying her child's soul in her. So from the moment of conception, we believe that the, that's when the body gets the soul, right? So that's a huge thing. And I'm not trying to say that men are worse or like they, we have it better than them. It's just different. So if you're looking for a way to make, to see yourself in a better light, if you've been feeling really negative lately and you feel down in the dumps and like you just aren't making it, this book, I think it's a hundred pages. Let me say I'm not it is oh, 108 pages. So it's a little longer than the other one, but the 108 pages, you can read it in a couple of days, a week, if you really are a slow reader. And it really is uplifting because it helps you see yourself how God sees you. So ladies, if you need some more positive pick me up for your spiritual life and to see yourself better, especially now with things as crazy as they are, and we've been locked in our homes for the most part and haven't been able to receive any of the sacraments, um, you, you can start to feel it like, you know, you get that negative attitude, like, oh man, it's just, you know, I'm not a great person. This isn't, um, what I'm meant to be, or, you know, God's kind of left me or whatever you, you, you know, negative thoughts are creeping in your mind. Pick up something like this, this, um, price isn't on the book, but it's on Amazon. I believe it was under $10. So you could get both of these books for about Let's see if you just got the other one, maybe $15 or under 20 bucks, you get both books and get a nice spiritual pick me up and really see how God planned for you, how much God loves you. And I, then you kind of start to see how you can start talking to your own children about how important they are, because you can't really talk about God and how much he loves them and how much he loves all of us and all the wonderful things he does for us. Unless we start realizing that about our own selves. And yeah, it's okay. It's good to admit that we're sinners, but we shouldn't dwell on it either. And that's another thing that Alice Van Hildebrand brings up in her book, that there are some negative things about being women. We talk too much, we ramble on, and then we dwell on our emotions a lot. And she was generalizing. I mean, we don't all do that. We don't all do it all the time as women, but it's something that we tend to do. So this, these are great role models, great authors um, that kind of help you realize, oh, I can do things as a parent, as a mother, to help see how God loves me. And for those of you who haven't been able to be mothers yet or never have been and you're watching this, it's still a great way to see how you can still be a spiritual mother to other people. 
um, which is also very important because by our femininity, we're still spiritual mothers to somebody. So I, I can't highly more recommend this, these books and um, I'm already doing it. I feel like, again, I'm doing what Alice von Hilpern said not to do, which is ramble on. But um, if you have any other questions about other Catholic resources you can get, um, just shoot me a comment in the um, message in the comments. You can email me at Catholic mom with coffee at gmail.com. Um, or if there are any other topics that you're curious about, go ahead and shoot me a message on there. Um, if you like this video, make sure that you click the like button and hit subscribe because the more we do things like that with Catholic videos that we like, the more YouTube's little algorithm thing realizes, oh, Catholicism is a good thing and not a bad thing. Um, and that's how we help spread the word of God. And that's how we all get closer to God is if we're getting together and um, sharing our faith so that we're not, it's not such a scary, bad thing. And also don't feel bad if you don't know your faith well enough yet. There are tons of resources out there and um, I am more than happy to help you find them. I'm more than happy to make any videos that you guys are curious about on a certain topics. So send me a message and I hope you guys have a great blessed week.